Hey, welcome back. It's Chris Nichols here from Boer Trout Fitters. And today I want to talk to you guys about some of those common pitfalls that you will face and that we have all been through when you start tying flies. And hopefully this video will then help you dodge a lot of those obstacles before they happen. So we absolutely have a lot of good information for you here today. So much so to talk about that this is going to be a part one of this video. And then we will talk about a lot of other common pitfalls in part two. All right, let's get to our first topic. So the first thing I want to talk about isn't really a pitfall, it's actually more of a misconception, and that is that by tying your own flies, you're going to somehow save a ton of money because you're not spending money at the fly shops buying commercial flies. But in fact, it's quite the opposite. I mean, you are going to spend more money tying your own flies because it's just the way it is. I mean, you're going to have fun trying materials, maybe only tie them once or twice, and then you move on to something else. Or you're going to tie a whole bunch of patterns before you really key in on the ones that you enjoy tying and enjoy using. But in the end, it is absolutely worthwhile spending the extra money to make your own flies. Just the pride and joy of catching fish on stuff that you've tied yourself, well, there's no feeling like it. But yes, expect to make a lot of patterns that end up going in boxes that you never touch again or maybe you give away to friends or something like that expect to make a lot of mistakes and have to learn and hopefully again this video will help you dodge some of those so the next thing I want to talk about is tools and I know a lot of beginners start out getting a very basic fly tying tool kit and of course that is a great way to get started but if there's a tool that I do think you should go and spend some money on, it's a good quality bobbin. Something with a really nice ceramic insert or just a high grade stainless steel bobbin. Because what I'll find with cheap bobbins is they'll often be a little bit rough on the thread when you're tying and you'll get a lot of break offs. And that can be really frustrating, especially when you're still trying to learn just how much tension you can put on thread. Going to a high quality bobbin means that you can put a little bit more tension without snapping the thread, just have an overall nicer experience going forward. It's well worth worth the money. Now, one of the most common fly tying materials you're going to encounter going forward is wire on a spool. It's super useful. We use it all the time to tie nymphs and streamers. And there's a major pitfall here that a lot of us have been through. I'm going to try to save you from, from this terrible, terrible experience. When you take this wire off the spool to cut off a piece, it's under tension. And if you happen to let go, well, basically, you're f it's going to end spool everywhere. It's going to make a big mess, just like this metal tinsel here. Look at that. It's all come unfurled. And now when you try to wind that back on the spool, you're going to put bends and kinks in it. And it's just never going to sit nice or look pretty. You're often going to get big tangles with wire and make a horrible mess. So remember always to put that wire back in the slot very carefully to secure it or use the rubber stopper that a lot of these spools have now as well. And that way you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. You're welcome. All right, so here we are now at our fly tying thread section of the shop because I want to talk about thread next. One of the first threads that you're probably going to buy is uni thread. I mean, this is ubiquitous thread, all the fly shops, and it's good stuff. It's basically a high quality sewing thread, very similar to that. And it comes in different thicknesses. We generally carry eight aught, which is quite fine for small dry flies, and we carry six aught, which is a little bit more general purpose. The issue though that beginner fly tires are going to have is it's quite easy to break, especially when you haven't learned proper tension control or maybe you're not using a good bobbin like we talked about. I do try to use 6 aught uni thread whenever I can get away with it just because it is that little bit stronger. I'll just use less wraps. But really what I want to talk to you about is spending a little bit more money but getting these multi-filament styles of threads. This is Semperfly Nano Silk. This is a good example where you can get it in these very fine thicknesses for small, small flies but because it's multi-filament it's very strong, it's hard to break and I just find that really nice to use. You'll avoid a lot of frustration. Another product that I love here is Danville's Flat Wax Nylon. We often use this for any nymphs, streamers, even big dry flies like stimulators and hoppers because it's affordable, you get a lot on the spool, and it's very hard to break. You can really reef on it, and it lays nice and flat on the hook. So pick up flat wax nylon, maybe pick up some of these higher end tying threads. It's maybe a little bit more expensive now, but it'll save you a lot of stress in the future. So the next thing I want to talk about are just some tips when it comes to fly tying, but they're all encompassing and very general. If you check out our fly tying videos, we'll actually show you specifically where to avoid these things. But what I want to talk about is first off, uh, crowding the eye when you're tying flies. So a lot of the times when people tie flies, they'll wind very close to the eye of the hook. And you really want to make sure you don't do that because if you find that you've tied the pattern and now you're right next to the eye, you're undoubtedly going to put thread over it, you're going to put materials over it, and you even might block actually being able to get your 
tippet through the actual eye of the hook. The other thing I want to say is just in general, when you're tying flies, beginners often put way too many materials on a fly because it makes them look bushy and it makes them look, you know, like they're really made to catch fish. But the truth of the matter is the more sparsely that you tie a fly, the better it tends to work. So just try to avoid that. Keep that in mind when you are tying flies for the first time. Okay, so the last tip that I want to leave you with, it really only applies if you're a very organized person, but if you can keep a running tally of the things that you've purchased and all the stuff that you have back at your fly tying desk, when you come into the fly shop, you'll know exactly what you need and what you don't need, and that can save you a lot of, well, money. But if you're like the rest of us, you're just a disorganized mess, well, at least here at the fly shop, we sincerely appreciate all of the extra materials you're gonna buy two or maybe even three times extra. Uh, we will really appreciate that extra support in business. So thank Thank you for that. All right, thanks so much for joining us for part one of our things I wish I knew before I started fly tying. You know, hopefully the tips that we gave you today will save you a lot of stress going forward. But if you have any questions about what we've talked about today, or if there's pitfalls that you've encountered that we haven't talked about, please share those in the comments below because we'd love to incorporate that into part two of our next video. And because we have a part two coming out, definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that and all the other content that we have. If you are looking for fly tying materials, check out bowrivertroutfitters.com. We'd really appreciate that as well. But thank you for joining us. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon with another episode shortly.